Hello fellow struggling vets, today we are going to talk about erythrocytosis as part of the hematology series. I'll put timestamps into the comment section below so you can skip to the part you like to check out. Now let's get started. Erythrocytosis is an increase in the circulating red blood cells and will be seen as an increase in the packed cell volume or hematocrit. Certain dog breeds such as sighthounds or dogs that live at high altitudes have hematocrit values above the reference range. Erythrocytosis can be classified as relative or absolute. Relative erythrocytosis, also known as pseudoerythrocytosis, refers to hemoconcentration, such as in dehydration with an increased serum concentration. In absolute or true erythrocytosis, the red blood cell mass is increased. It can be classified as primary or secondary depending on the pathogenesis and serum erythropoietin concentration. Primary erythrocytosis or polycythemia rubra vera results from an autonomous erythropoietin independent proliferation of red blood cell precursors in the bone marrow and is considered a myeloproliferative disease, which is diseases of the bone marrow and blood. Increased thrombocytes may sometimes be present in these animals. Secondary erythrocytosis can result from increased autotropic erythropoietin production, which means erythropoietin produced by the kidneys, or it can be heterotropic, which means erythropoietin produced in sites other than the kidneys. Some causes of autotropic erythropoietin production are physiologically appropriate and occurs in response to tissue hypoxia such as that occurring at a high altitude and in the settings of chronic cardiopulmonary disease, right to left cardiovascular shunts and carboxyhemoglobinemia. Tumor-associated erythrocytosis can be caused by renal masses and neoplasms in other areas. Hormonal stimuli may also trigger erythrocytosis in animals with normal tissue oxygenation, such as in dogs with hyperadrenocorticism and cats with hyperthyroidism. The clinical signs may occur acutely and cause functional abnormalities of the central nervous system, such as behavioral, motor or sensory changes like seizures. Cardiopulmonary signs may occasionally be present. A common manifestation of erythrocytosis in dogs is paroxysmal sneezing, likely caused by increased blood viscosity in the nasal mucosa. Microcytosis, which is unusually small red blood cell size caused by relative iron deficiency is common in dogs with erythrocytosis. Physical examination in dogs and cats with erythrocytosis may include bright red mucous membranes and erythema polyuria, polydipsia, splenomegaly, renal masses, and a neoplasm elsewhere. Relative erythrocytosis caused by dehydration should be ruled out first. In certain circumstances such as hemorrhagic gastroenteritis, dogs may have a high hematocrit but a relatively normal serum protein concentration. The reason for the lack of increase in the protein concentration is unknown, but the erythrocytosis resolves with appropriate fluid therapy. The initial approach is to decrease the blood viscosity by reducing the number of circulating red blood cells by performing therapeutic phlebotomies, in which a certain volume of blood is collected from a central vein. Because sudden decreases in blood volume can result in marked hypotension, a peripheral vein catheter can be used to administer an equivalent volume of saline solution at the same time that the blood is being collected. The patient's cardiopulmonary status should first be evaluated. Next, you have to rule out hypoxemia, which is low oxygen levels in blood, by using blood gas analysis and pulse oximetry. If the pulse pressure of oxygen is normal, Excretory abdominal ultrasonography or computed tomography should be performed to determine whether masses or infiltrative lesions are present in the kidneys. If no such lesions are found, the patient most likely does not have renal secondary erythrocytosis, so a search for an extra renal neoplasm should be conducted. If polycythemia rubra vera is diagnosed, hydroxyurea is administered according to the patient's needs. 
phlebotomy should be repeated as dictated by the patient's clinical signs. If the final diagnosis is secondary erythrocytosis, the primary disorder should be treated. In dogs with right to left shunts and secondary erythrocytosis, the hydroxyurea protocol can be used as well. Most dogs and cats with polycythemia rubra vera have long survival times, more than 2 years if treated with hydroxyurea. The prognosis in dogs and cats with secondary erythrocytosis depends on the nature of the primary disease. That's it for this video. If you like our videos, do hit like, comment and subscribe. Your support means a lot and you can follow us on our social media as well. See you next time.